So back to so going back to this um to this crash that you that that like that that you're suggesting could mm-hmm. or like just might happen just inevitably. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that there would be more of like um, do you think there would just be a bigger renaissance for the indie games? Yes, which we're seeing now anyway. Yes, um, like like we're seeing a lot of we're seeing a lot of indie games that are just like popping up. I mean, you know, we mentioned ukulele in the um, in, in the Banjo Kazooie podcast, and mm-hmm. you know, we just we like we kind of touched on this before in a few other places, but we're seeing a lot of indie games getting way more praise and way more yes of like um, just love from just gamers everywhere just because it's it's these little baby studios that are taking their time and like they're yes. taking many years to make some of these games at points like yeah. like Cuphead is like the you know the granddaddy of of all these like major success stories where like it, it took these guys you know who just wanted to make an amazing video game and they like they loved this particular style of animation and they also love this particular style of games, like the Contra games, and they love the, um, um, they love the, um, the, they love, like, the 20s Betty Boop style of animation. I forget the yeah. name. I want to say, I, I, I know it's Shrek, but I, I keep thinking, in my brain, I keep saying Max Shrek, but Max Shrek is the, is the actor. That's the guy who played Nosferatu, Nosferatu, isn't it? Yeah, it's not, it's not him. <laughs> No, I, I, yeah, I know he's like Mary Melody's kind of style. Yes, like, yes, like, yeah, the, like the very, like the classic golden age of cartoons, car, uh, yes. cartoons, like those, like you know the um, like where they have like the very like um, like very loopy frames, and they're like very you know they're very loose. They're like kind of like tubular. Yes. Um, that particular style of animation. And they, you know, they taught themselves how to do that, basically, like how to draw yeah. in that particular style. Uh, Fleischman, Max Fleischman. That's the okay. Name. Okay. Um, that, I knew there was a Max. I don't know why I kept thinking of the Shrek. And anyway, it doesn't make a difference now. Um, but the Fleischman animation style was like really, you know, vivid and vibrant and like, you know, very animated and loose. And sometimes it was a little scary and like yeah. creepy. And the, like there was just something about that particular era that they loved and they made and, and they made cuphead and you know they had like their construction jobs during the day and they just did what they needed to do to put food on the table but mm-hmm. at night for like years these guys just made the, the moldenhauer guys they just made cuphead and it took them you know aeons to do it and like the kickstarter succeeded very well and like to the point where this game was so successful that they were able to market it into its own like just its own brand and its own franchise where like mm-hmm. they have memorabilia just out the wazoo just of licensed cuphead everything to the point where they have their own netflix show that should be out pro- i hope this year i'd like to just see it um so like good for them you know something yeah. like it just it takes time but if you surround yourself with people who believe in you you know it can it, it has a good chance, like we said on the Kevin Smith uh, Viewist Universe episode. Mm-hmm. But it's crazy. Well, I think a, a lot of the problem, too, with some of the bigger companies, uh, smaller indie companies are always generally run by people that are in the gaming industry. So it's like, you know, a developer that wanted to make their own company kind of thing. And they used to work for maybe, maybe they did work for a AAA company one time, but they kind of broke off and do their own thing. A lot of the times, companies like EA, Activision, Blizzard, these big AAA companies, the people at the top are not even people that have worked ever worked on a video game. Oh, they're no, like they're usually... investment bank, like hedge fund managers, and and like people that are like investment bankers. Yeah, I was gonna that... say they're usually idiots who have nothing to do with, who have no business being in this industry, but they're right. just there because of because because they have money. Yeah, basically because they have money, or they're or like they know a or they know a guy who mm-hmm. just, like, wants to, like, give their friend a job, and, like, they're not really yeah. going to do anything, but they're just getting paid to be an asshole. Yeah. And they they don't have any idea how the industry works, how game development works. They're just there to make money. And that's the problem. That's where you get this, like, mentality that, like, oh, mi- like, it's the quantity over quality mentality, where, whereas, like, smaller indie companies, they're, they're pouring their heart and soul into a game because it's their passion. 
and you you know it shows you get a better game you better better quality game you look at a game like minecraft you know notch when he created minecraft that was like all he did and like the guy became like a billionaire because of it because it became like a cultural phenomenon but like he didn't like like set out necessarily to become a billionaire. He set out because he wanted to make a game that was like really open ended that you could build what you wanted to do and it had like cool little things you could mine, you could build, you could rearrange the whole landscape. Like that was like his goal. He just wanted to right. make a really cool video game. Right. And it never and it's like I mean that's the good thing about like that's my favorite thing about the games that I play is like they never end. Yeah. Like Minecraft is a game yeah. that never ends. You can no. you know, like it does, like it doesn't end until you stop playing the game. Tony right. Hawk, a game that doesn't end until after you stop playing the game. Yeah, you know, same deal with any fighting game. You could, yeah, you could keep fighting. You could fight forever, or you could just, you know, go to bed. Right. Whereas, like, you know, you have games like Call of Duty where. Pretty much now they're almost exclusively multiplayer, and they just tack on a single player campaign because they have to, you know. Yeah, and it's like, a like you know, it's like a five hour trash. campaign. Yeah, and it's usually not that good. No, it's it's a five hour linear campaign where you don't stray off. Like you, you know, you run up a straight hallway to a friggin' room full of guys, you kill them. You run up a, a straight hallway to the next room full of guys, and you kill them. And it's essentially every, every level is the same, and you know. Yeah, there's no like critical thinking involved because no because everything is going to the because everything is just going to the online play where like right you know, like we said before you play for two hours you're playing against a 13 year old who's been playing for 12 hours because their parents don't give a shit right and then you know what do you think is going to happen you get the little kid who keeps killing you and they're like screaming obscenities into the into your headphones yeah and it's just like why am i doing this but like, didn't yeah. Notch like like after Microsoft bought Minecraft and like they made him like a super billionaire? Like, didn't he get like really depressed after? Uh, I don't. I actually don't know. I had heard that he. Uh, I had read something that he had gotten like really depressed because like he he like threw these elaborate parties for a while and just like after a while he just started like just throwing them only because he like was alone. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be surprised because, you know, he became like a multi-billionaire and, you know, sold his comp his like, you know, life's work he sold off, you know, he was so I, I could see him being depressed over that, especially because the type of person he was, he got in not wanting to like make billions of dollars, but to make a good video game. And he made a great video game and sold it and made billions of dollars. But then like, it's like all of a sudden his life's work is gone, you know, yeah. like because he's not involved anymore. He doesn't work at Mojang. He, uh, like I said, sold it to Microsoft and they, you know, they, I think some of the team is still there, but like for the most part, it's like mostly new people that are just, you know, continuing Minecraft because it's like a moneymaker. Uh, what is he doing now? I actually don't know. I haven't heard much of notch, yeah. um, in, in a couple of years now, which, you know, I hope he's all right. Um, yeah. Hope he, he could find something that, like, interests him at least, or maybe start working on another game again. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, this is another one that um, that I can't not mention. Well, Little Nightmare is another big one. So was Head Hello Neighbor. Uh, the mm -hmm. horror genre has, like, just exploded from this, too. Yeah. But yes. like, Five Nights at Freddy's was... That was... A big one. I mean, it might be okay to do an episode on that at some point, but it's like, yeah, uh, like I don't know if Fortnite was a similar thing, but like Fortnite. Well, no, Fortnite's like... become uh, Fortnite is, is I'm pretty sure a triple A game. It was made by I think it was made by Epic Studios. Uh, well, so okay, no. they're they're yeah they're they're kind of big. They're you know they made uh, Years of War and uh, Unreal Tournament and that kind of thing. Uh, okay, all right. Um, anyway, so, like, Five Nights at Freddy's, that was, like, a labor of love thing from the get-go, yeah. and, like, everybody just loved it. Because, every well, I mean, that was really around the time that the, like, Let's Plays and the reaction videos really started taking off. So y Yeah. Like, so the YouTubers and, like, the streamers are really what got that game, you know, to, like, 
get to, to like reach the popularity that it has but like five nights of freddy's goes from just being like one game that this guy scott coffin makes because he um he was making a bunch of jesus games and like a bunch of like religious games and stuff like that and he made like he made a game about like a woodchuck that like that like had and, like none of his games had gotten good reviews they weren't really considered good games they didn't sell well uh -huh. and like the woodchuck game like people had like like in the reviews they had panned it and they had pointed out that it's like a creep and like they looked creepy and that they looked scary so he's like he kind of had like a light bulb moment and he just started making a horror game and it was just like this five nights of freddy's you're stuck alone at chuck e cheese and the like animatronics come to life and they like are trying to kill you mm -hmm. like and you know it's a just simple point and click game you don't have to do like it uh, it's not super crazy but he made the whole thing by himself it takes off he starts making more and more and he's like he makes this crazy lore that he's like that's all like hidden throughout the game that you have to look for so there's like this other element that he puts into it and then there's all the other games and he he keeps adding and then all the youtubers started like jumping onto the lore videos so like that kept uh -huh. propelling it like the game theorists guy like yeah. that's where like his popularity went crazy. So like him being an opportunist, he noticed that, and he just started making more FNAF videos, and then so did everybody else. So like Scott Coffin, like he like he inadvertently made like one of the biggest indie game hits ever to the point where he's like done a he has like a book series around this that adds to the lore, and then on top of that. He, um, like, there's a FNAF movie being developed by Bloomhouse, which is, like, a, which... Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they've been, like, trying to do it for a few years. I think it's filming now. I think they were starting the film last year, and then everything went into hell in a handbasket, and now I think it's picked back up again. But he's, like, still, hmm. all, all the while, while he's working on other Five Nights at Freddy's games, and that's also been licensed out to, like everything under the sun too so like yeah i think the two kings here are really five nights at freddy's and cuphead of like the indie game stuff and even and more of that's going to happen too like little nightmares had its own comic book for a little bit and then um like just explaining backstories uh and you know i think the future really is in the indie games because mm -hmm. every because like people can see the passion there and Yes. With like indie games, they don't tend to do DLC too often. It tends to just be this is the game that you bought, this is all of the game, and thanks, you know, thank you for supporting my dream. Yeah, and well, th even if they do do mm -hmm. DLC, it's always generally um, yes. like a a, a a new game, like yeah. what a, what an expo what you would call an expansion pack, you know. Yeah. Which Back is, in the it's like it's like almost like a whole new game exactly you know which well, there's so much new bad. content no so it's like so it's it's worth it and and also when it, yeah. when an, you see when a triple a developer does this it just it feels like a cash grab but when an indie do, yeah. when an indie game does this it's a thank you mm -hmm. like that's really what it is it's just like you gave me enough money where i can make more where i can do another one so, in the meantime, here's this, and then in two years or whatever, I'll be back. So, yeah. it's, like, it feels good to, it feels good to buy it for, like, for an indie game. I don't feel like, like, I don't feel, like, ripped off. Because, like, sometimes I'll buy, sometimes I'll buy a game, and then months later here's the dlc and it's a whole new thing and then it's like or like it's a few characters or like then it's here's another dlc six months later here's another dlc and it's like i don't like haven't i given you enough money by now mm -hmm. where when an indie game does it it's just like hey i'm gonna be doing like like it's like it feels good because i know that you know this guy can pay his bills or this gal can pay her bills or whatever and mm -hmm. They can keep doing this, and they don't have to like get a shitty job at a place that they hate. You yeah, know, like they can they can keep doing this, and as long as they keep doing as long as long as they keep making games, then I'll keep buying them and I'll keep supporting them. Yeah, we're like I'd I'd much rather give I'd much rather give my money to a neighbor that that like needs it that could use it, 
than like a greedy corporation that like that can just yeah just has like Scrooge McDuck in there like as a CEO and just yeah. swimming in money all day. Yeah. Well, I feel the same way, and that's why I generally tend to buy either you know smaller companies' games or you know indie games, um, you know that kind of thing. Uh, I, I find that Japanese games don't really Japanese AAA games don't really have the same kind of like money grabbing, uh, money grabbing business model as American companies do. Um, I think because Japan has this culture of like, you know, if you do bad work, then you're a shitty person too. You know, like they have like this culture of like, it's true. Like if you, if you're bad in business, then you're a bad person. Oh basically, God, that's, that's like you, you failed at life. If you fail not, in business. You fail at life. That's not always true though. There's always, like, I know there's like, there more often than not. There's like other circumstances, i.e. people uh, who are trying to screw you over. Well, I mean, there's a lot of like honor tied to it and stuff, so it's like you're kind of like yeah, you're no, only no, as no. good as your your you're only as good as your worst performance, basically, you know. Yeah. Well, so I, mean, I think they have like a crazy like where I mean the work ethic is psychotic to the point where like people yes. just die at their desks every year. Yeah, actually, Can you it's interesting. What it's like to be the janitor who's just like <laughs> you know, like, like, like. Like, how do you fit that into a job description? Occasionally, must be re- must be willing to work on weekends and holidays in case of dead. <laughs> you have to ca- you have to carry the dead bodies to the meat grinder. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like, um, like, oh, what's the bullet point? We're, we're gonna need somebody. We need a self starter who can who can bullet point one, clean and restock office supplies. Two, make sure that everything is kept in order. Three, pick up the dead people every so often. Yeah. It, that's it's actually in in Japan. It's actually not taboo to sleep at your desk because it means that you're working hard and you need a nap. Yeah. <laughs> so it's they their work ethic there is crazy, and I think that's oh why Japanese AAA titles j- tend to be better made, better quality, and you know more passion poured into them than American ones, just because that's like the Japanese business model is like be as good as you possibly can be and if you don't then you're you suck and you should commit seppuku <laughs> basically I mean, you know i wouldn't always say that i mean like it's like a it's either passion or fear well it's it's, maybe it's a mixture of both, both you know it's probably passion for like the executives and sheer terror for the grunts yeah <laughs> i mean also like they drink heavily in japan and like and when your boss goes out to drink, the whole team has to drink, and yeah. it, like, and it's like disrespectful to say, "Oh, I, I've already, I've already had six beers. I can't have, a, I can't have another one." If your boss wants to drink twelve, and your boss usually does, then you have to drink twelve, and then you're yeah. expected to like be back at your desk at like you know regular time the ne- the following day. Yeah. And if your boss wants to go out for drinks again, you can't say no. Yep. So it's it's rough. It's rough out there, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see anyway. a major field joke about that. <laughs> it's tough out there, I tell you. <laughs> I got a boss, Japanese guy, real nice guy. He's always getting me hammered. But then he wants me to come into work the next day. I, I can't even see my wife. I got no respect. <laughs> No respect. Three people died at that desk. Guess who's got to clean it up? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's loot boxes. That's our little spiel. I got on... no respect. I got to pay more money for a video game I already bought six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> they bleed me left and right. Now my kids want to buy a new game. <laughs> I could go on forever. I have a terrible Rodney Day to feel depression. <laughs> he, like, 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 I, like, like, for me to get Rodney, it's like, it's like partially my Uncle Frank, and then I just have to be louder. Oh. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> he... <laughs> oh, God. All right. Um, so the closing statements on microtransactions, they're bad. They're bad, and they sh- should feel bad. <laughs> Support your local indie video game developers give yeah. them the money don't give the triple a guys money 
Yeah, and if you want to buy a AAA game, wait six months to a year until it's on sale because fuck those companies. <laughs> buy it at half price. Yeah, exactly. They got enough money to go around. Yeah. All right. Well, we got through it pretty nicely. I've got nothing else to add. No. Thank you, I, everybody, for sticking around and enjoying our show. We love you. We're sorry. Yeah, thank Don't you. Don't get up because we'll super kick you in the face. Oh. <laughs> thank you very much for checking out Why Does This Exist, a show all about the weirdest in pop culture. You can support us by heading over to Patreon at patreon.com slash why does this exist and give us a little extra bucks if you would like to be a wonderful, wonderful human being. Not that you're not already, but if you want to be extra wonderful, we'd love you a little bit more. Yeah. You can also let us know about anything weird or, um, you know, if you like the show, if you hate the show, at why does this exist show at gmail.com. That's a really big show. That's a lot of shows, a lot of shows, too many shows. We've got a million shows. Not enough days, also, not enough time. You can also do that on YouTube if, by like going yeah. to, by going to YouTube, the channel Why Does This Exist? Liking, commenting, subscribing, dinging that obnoxious little bell that tells you every time we have a new episode or a new clip or a new whatever. And you can view it and let us know if it's good, bad, or ugly. Sometimes it could be a combination of both. And you can also listen to us everywhere that you get your podcasts, including Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. We said YouTube, but it's still there. Apple Music, um, Amazon Music, Audible, Pandora, TuneIn, Alexa, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and Listen Notes. Thank you, everybody, for checking us out. Yeah. I'm Chris. And I'm Rob. And it is 1130 at night. I got to go to bed. All right. All righty. Do not forget, everybody. Question everything. Good night, everybody. All right. We will see you next time when we talk about the Eddie Murphy sitcom, The PJs. Same bat time, same bat channel. Which means whenever you want. Good night. Good night.